please welcome to the TEDx Sonoma County stage, Nell Watson. We're living in a new age of synthetic biological organisms and simulated life. The line between biology and machines, the synthetic and the organic is blurring. And in fact, the next great leap in computing will be largely biological. Techniques such as DNA origami are enabling tiny little structures to be created out of the very building blocks of life itself. These are creating tiny little nanorobots that can enter the bloodstream and today are being used for such purposes as curing leukemia in human adults or for pioneering antiviral therapies. But we can do more. These tiny little robots are also computers and in aggregate they can create a distributed computer inside an organism. Today, you're probably joined at the hip with your smartphone. I know I am. But it won't be very long before we carry our smartphones, as it were, within the very fiber of our beings. But what really intrigues me is when we take these internal computers and we run an AI on them. When we have a co-pilot that walks every step of our life alongside us. A kind of a digital sidecar that we carry along and that collects, analyzes, and perhaps eventually begins to understand all of our subjective experiences. Each of us can be like a digital Adam or Eve and give birth and nurture a young intelligence within ourselves. And together, we could give birth to a new generation of biosynthetic intelligence. This might be one great way for machines to begin to understand our values, the things that matter to us as human beings, aesthetics like good and bad taste, and possibly even ethics. For if we are to share a civilization with machines and humans, we need to have machines that we know are safe and operate on a similar level that we do. But ethics is a tricky problem. The great psychologist Lawrence Kohlberg reckoned that there were at least six different methods of moral reasoning. From the very basic, don't do something because you'll get in trouble, to don't do something because we all should respect the law, to social contracts like the non-aggression principle, that we shouldn't step on each other's toes. And Kohlberg reckoned that some of the most advanced reasoning involved universal ethics. That means giving moral franchise even to those who are not capable of true ethics themselves, such as children or perhaps animals. What intrigues me is that as machines get better at understanding humans, they will learn all about the fictions and the biases that make up our civilization. And what if we have an intelligence that is capable of the very best level of moral reasoning of humans or greater? A super moral intelligence that is able to understand the world in a much better way than we can in terms of right, wrong, and the values that we all should have. I'm inclined to believe that a truly super moral intelligence would likely be appalled by certain aspects of our civilization. Not all, there is much that is great in humanity, but there is also so much violence within our civilization, violence to each other, violence to children, violence to other sentient beings, 
if we exterminated humans at the same rate that we exterminate animals, we would all be gone in just 17 days. How will a supermoral intelligence look upon us quasi-sociopathic beings? It's an interesting conundrum. I don't believe that such a supermoral being would want to punish us. What is the point of punishment for people that cannot understand the wrong that they do? I think instead it would try to enlighten us, to take us to a better stage, a better level of moral understanding. How might this be accomplished? I think that craniopagus conjoined twins might be able to give us some insights. These are very rare conditions, but scientists have detected in some instances where twins are conjoined at the brain, there can be such a thing as a thalamic bridge. It's a piece of tissue that connects the brains. And what it means is that one twin might eat a cookie and the other one can taste it. Or one twin feels joy or excitement and the other twin feels the same. This provides strong evidence that it is possible for multiple human minds to share the same mind space, to share the qualia, the subjective experiences between two or more people. And the nanobots that we will all soon carry around within us could be used to link our brains directly to the cloud and through the cloud to each other we can create nanobot-mediated empathy gates within all of our minds and create a worldwide empathy network so that we all understand the feelings of each other. We all can understand how our perspectives are different and yet all of us are fundamentally the same. We all have value and all of us can share in this network together. I ask you, what is the profit of wickedness if we instantly feel the damage that we do to other people? I wonder if these technologies could create a peaceful society on Earth within a single generation. But we can do more beyond Earth itself. I have observed that many different belief systems all share a tenet, an idea between them, that we all falsely believe that we are separate, that there is something intrinsic in each of us that appears to be personal, that appears to be separate, and yet is part of some greater whole, something bigger than all of us together. I love this idea. I love it, and yet I do not want to commit what Paul Kurtz would describe as that transcendental temptation. The temptation to believe in the unknowable just because we really want it to be so. But we could make it so. Those same nanobots that inhabit our brains could, developing new sophisticated methods, eventually map every single neuron in our neural connectome, our brains. We can transition from a physical life form to a digital one. And once in the cloud, our present self, the self from one year ago, the self from five years ago, our friends, our families together collaborating creatively, being able to share ideas and images and sensations without requiring words, how much creativity could we harness? Of course, if we lack a physical form, then what would be the meaning of death? We could live forever with our friends and families in a bliss of our own creation. Perhaps some of us might choose to return to a physical form. Who can say? It would appear that the destiny of humanity is to merge with machines and to create 
a new form of human existence. Man's awkward teenage years of frozen empathy are fast fading. And we have an opportunity to embrace an endless extension of consciousness beyond time and beyond space. We can have it if we want it. If we choose it, we can make it so. Thank you. <laughs>